Yeah, yeah, what's, 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 what's your name? Uh, Global Unlimited Podcast. Yo, it's your boy Just Man. It's, it's, I'm here today, Global Unlimited Podcast. Of course, you see what I got with me today. Waiting for my other co host, uh, Ace, to come through. Waiting for him to, uh, to come through today, so he'll be in a minute. But, man, no, don't need no introduction. Y'all see his face. NJ Weed, man, in the building today with me. What's going on with you, bro? I'm oh, man. Just trying to, just trying to. Keep it moving, trying to trying to get ahead. Like I like we talked about earlier, before um, I interviewed you a year and a half ago, before you went to jail and everything, you was in, you was in the process of fighting everything then. Um, so since then, you've been you, they locked you up, and um, they you know what I'm saying you got out and everything. They dropped all the charges, all the tickets and everything. They dropped all that stuff. They dropped everything. Actually, they didn't drop them. I whooped their ass. Whooped their ass. They, they didn't just drop them. <laughs> No, I fought. I fought. <laughs> and I won. <laughs> After that irritates me. The other day, somebody was like, man, I'm glad they let you out. I was like, are you crazy? They didn't let me out. I fought my way out. I won. Like, stop with that. <laughs> they right. wasn't being nice. Especially you, huh? I mean, you a lot of stuff with this, especially with you being right across from City Hall in Trenton, we were in Trenton, New Jersey. And uh, I guess they felt offended. Or I don't know what they felt, but like, you know. Well, I kind of got. I got into a pissing contest basically with, with Lieutenant Gonzalez in the Trent Police Department. But uh but you know, as this lawsuit's going through and things are popping up and things are I'm finding out things, you know, it had a lot to do with the mayor, the mayor's office, the old mayor's office. Michael yeah, yeah. Michael Walker specifically. Uh, you know, he, he, he instigated a lot of things that happened to me. I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was just simply only the police department. But no, it, it sounds like, they, up, sounds like they, yeah, it was some it was some some marching orders. Some apparently I I was offensive to some people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't the, know how. But you know what? But the Weedman Joint is actually registered as a, as, a, as a temple. Yeah. So basically, like a church, a nonprofit organization. Yeah. And so the, the laws is a little bit different from regular uh, establishments or regular businesses that's open up here in New Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. I. I I incorporated as a church back in 2007 in California. And it doesn't matter where I physically am. I, can, I, me and my church come with me. I rent a building. I rent a building. I rent this building across the street from City Hall, and I knew when I did it, directly across the street from, <laughs> you know, from from City Hall in Trenton, New Jersey. It was going to, it was going to be a controversial. But to me, I was looking at the publicity of it. Right. You know, I didn't think that one day. The, the, police department, the police department would just do me dirty and file false charges on me and set me up and all that. I, I figured it was going to be a legal fight, and I was ready for a legal fight. Right. You know, they, they turned it into some, some, some corrupt kangaroo. Some exercise. So, yeah. All right, my co host is joining us. I'm at Ace. Sorry, me, Lee, bro. Hey, man. So good, man. What's going on? How you doing? So, we're just getting to talk about, you know what I'm saying, him being uh, on the tickets. So, he fought his way out, and he just let him go. But <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely get Good um, reputation procedure, I'll tell you that. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, know a lot, I know a lot about you before I bet you. My boy Dio does a lot of work with you, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Dio's working together now on a couple things. Yeah. Speaking of, because you're, like, you're home now, you know I'm saying? how long you locked up for? 16 months. 400, yeah, 400, yeah, 400, 447 days in about 12 hours. You were at the workhouse? I had the workhouse the whole time. Yeah, oh, I, man, I, I read about you on hunger strike. Yeah, yeah, I went on a hunger strike for a minute to catch some media attention. That worked too, by the way. Yeah. You know what? Let me tell you what I got out besides hunger pains. <laughs> <laughs> I got, yo, actually, I had some physical issues too. Like, like you know, I passed out once or twice, anything. Yeah, you want to eat those things? Yeah, yeah, I had an issue. It was getting ready to start. It was getting ready to put me in the morgue. I mean, uh, not the morgue. Oh, the vermin. The vermin. You know, at first they tried to ignore me, but then I passed out once or twice. It was like, wait a minute. He, had, he got too much media attention, something really happened to him. Yeah, it so, awesome. Yeah. yeah, but that just just doing that hunger strike ended up with uh, uh, you know a couple newspapers wrote about it, uh, a couple groups started paying attention to me, which which was good for me. I even ended up having Dog the Bounty Hunter come to town, advocating on my behalf, trying to get bail. A couple. Uh, so they wouldn't try to give you a bail. They, they wouldn't give me bail. That's what happened. Like, they held me under the bail reform act, and that's what I was protesting. Like, Wait a minute, I, you know, I could have made bail like, under this new bail reform act. Supposedly, it was about letting uh, poor people out, nonviolent people, which I considered myself. 
and letting uh, you know and then holding habitual violent offenders. And I'm not a habitual violent oh, offender, yeah. but but they but the bill reform act can be used as a tool with a weapon too by the prosecutor's office because all they gotta do is say, hey, I want him detained. They're fighting they, yeah, like that, right? They said that I was that that I was going to obstruct justice. And I'm like, I, 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 yeah, it was like the minority report. Like it was like that movie. Like you're punishing me before I did the crime. Like what are you talking about? I didn't, you know. And they tried me with witness tampering, which was totally bullshit too. First of all, yes, I'm one of them. I do not like rats. You know, if I ever get caught doing something, I'm doing my time. Right. I'm not trading my time for somebody else's life. I'm not, you know, ruining somebody else. And I've never done it over the years. I've been approached several times police officer like DEA before, you know, trying to get me to turn on somebody. I'm like, you know, crazy. And this guy, I don't know what is, I knew he had a couple of issues. His name is Zev Lapis, by the way. The prosecutor? No, he's a, he's a, he's a dude from Bordentown. He had his own drug issues. I, I didn't know none of that. You know, he just used to come in once in a while. He used to try to be my friend. You know, you know, you know first of all, you know, when you get 50 years old, people are just trying to be your friend, kind of like, it seems to be. I don't like anything from Bordentown, keep it real. Yeah, well, 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 I didn't know he was from Bordentown, to be honest, I was from Trenton at the time. And all I know, here, here's how I even wreck and realize everything. You, you all watch Fred Flintstone when y'all was a kid, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Flintstone. You remember Barney Rope? Uh -huh. Barney Rope used to frow Fred around. He used to be like, hey, Fred. Hey Fred, go and start every conversation. <laughs> hey Fred, right? I used to think that was funny, right? Well, my name is Ed. This dude was following me around, going, "Hey Ed, hey Ed," you know. And in my head, I kept calling him Barney Rubble. I told the staff I was calling him Barney Rubble. I didn't know his name was Barney Rubble. But at some point, he 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 put three hundred dollars in my donation jar, right? And he was asking for weed. A couple times he asked for weed. I always got something. Right? But this particular day, he did. He put $300 in the donation jar and was asking for weed. So I hooked him up. You know, I totally admit it. I did it. He got me that day. And I hooked him up. Um, and then, he, then he lied, though. He said several other times that he, he, he got weed. Oh, so he was, he was setting you up, basically. He was, set, he was setting that's me like, up. That's like saying your name when we were on record. Yeah, where yeah, he, he, had, name. he had this little phone. I, like, since then, after, after everything went down, I got the videos. He had a phone. He couldn't even hold the phone. He held it upside down. So, you know, we're talking and it's upside down. He had this audio device that didn't hardly get nothing. They didn't really get a good, he, he was a very bad CI. Why he was there, he took pictures. Because I had a little young boy and there was like drawing pictures and putting people on the wall. This dude posed for a picture. Right in the middle of rat thinking, he poses for a picture. So we put it up. But I, I don't know nothing about this at the time. All I know is I got into a pissing contest with the cops. I filed a lawsuit against them, and what they did that I didn't know about was they hired this rat to come and set me up. It's called entrapment. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. yeah and that's what they did. They set me up. And I'm like, you know, I wasn't out on the street selling weed. I wasn't selling weed. I wasn't even selling. Anybody knows they come in and stand next to me. Put the donut jar. He asked for some weed. So it was yeah. like, you never sold him the product. Like, yeah. You never fixed sold it. Technically, it's still distribution. So, okay. so, okay. so, like, like I said, he actually did get me on that one. But then he lied about five more times. So that doesn't make a difference, right? I, I defended myself. I wanted to defend myself. So I wanted to know who it was right away. You know, and I, it, it, it struck me. So I've been arrested before. Usually you get your search warrant and you get an affidavit with it. Well, they gave me a search warrant when they arrested me. They didn't give me an affidavit. I wanted to know how they got this search warrant. So for like two to three months, from April to August, I was just, that was my whole thing. Just give me the search, give me the affidavit, yeah. give me the affidavit. I want to know, like, you, know, you can't just get a search warrant. So, all right, how you do it? After I read it, as soon as I read it, I realized, wait a minute, hold it. They say that I sold somebody an ounce of weed for three hundred dollars. I instantly knew who it was because I wasn't selling weed, but I do remember that dude gave me three hundred dollars one time. Barney <laughs> Rubble. So instantly I knew who he was. Like I said, he was taking pictures. You know, I put his picture on my Facebook. Instantly, it was like I wanted to defend myself and defending myself. I want to know. You know, you have a right. To know who your accuser are. He's right. my accuser. If he's if his statement was what got me arrested, then he's my accuser. And the Constitution says I have a right to face my accuser. But they was calling him a CI, thinking I couldn't, I couldn't get to him or I couldn't, I couldn't know who it was. You know, but I wanted to know, like, why? Because see, like I said, I looked at this as an entrapment. Once I realized everything, 
I was like, man, this is nothing but a trap, man. It was because I had gotten to a whole fishing contest with them about what time I should be open or not, at 11 o'clock, or I said I should be open till 2, or if I wanted to, 24 hours. But they're saying that I had to close at 11. That was the police department, Lieutenant Gonzalez said. I basically got to a whole fishing contest with him about that, and I filed a lawsuit against them in March, and they responded by hiring this rat. And when they hired the rat, like I said, the police, the police are entitled to... Uh, or should I say police are empowered to investigate crimes, to stop crimes, to help prosecute crimes, but they're not empowered to, to uh, create crimes. And that's what they do. And a lot of police departments do. A lot of people get, get hit with a confidential informant. You know, a lot of, most of the time it's, a, it's an entrapment scheme. They send somebody, they're monitoring it, they send them to commit a crime to you so they can arrest you, not their rat. Right. So, so because uh, I knew all knew that, and I, I understood the whole entrapment scheme. I wanted to know who this who the person was. And when they didn't let me know who it was, I realized I had a picture of him. And I put this picture online, and like within two hours, the dude called me, asked me to put, take this picture down. So I knew what I did. I knew it was him. I didn't, you know, and I ain't made no threats, no nothing. And all I did was ask, "Who is this? What's his real name?" And within hours. His name, first his name, a couple, a couple days later, people was like, oh, he does this, he does that. You know, but the kicker was about a week later, somebody said, hey, he looks just like the guy over in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. I'm like, what? Right. So he sends me a link from the Ben Salem Police Department. On the Ben Salem Police Department's website was a picture of the same guy, and they were asking the same thing. Who is this guy? If you know any information, call this number. Because oh, he, so was, he was he was selling counterfeit tickets over there. What what I learned later is he's a total fraud guy. He's in the fraud. He's in this flim flam. The Trenton Police Department caught him selling um, uh, oxycotton or something. Some 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 some. So he was a harder drug for yeah, 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 yeah. But but yeah. how he was getting them was with counterfeit uh, prescription pads. And he was taking the pads and going all around and buying them and then selling them. Were and they, they you know, well, he got charged a couple towns. Later, I find this out. He got charged a couple towns, but Trenton used it. And he was a drug addict on top of being a con, con man. He was a drug addict. So they used him. You know, that's the funny thing, too. You know, I think these, you know they shouldn't take advantage of people. The dude is a drug addict. And they should have got help. He should have got this. But said they put him to work. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they put him to work, you know. And they know drug addicts like that, opium addicts, you know, they know. They don't want to get locked up because they got to go through the whole withdrawals and all that that's, stuff. Yeah. You know, so, that's not, so that's not a pain. It's about the physical shit. Right. There's some pins out there taking pictures and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see him. I, <laughs> but, uh, oh, I see him, yeah. But, um, yeah, so it just turned into this big mess, whereas the police department and the prosecutor's office was trying to hide the guy's name. Like, I was ready to duke it out on the weed charges. They, they, when they raided me, they did find some weed. They did say I had... It was under the 100 grams and all that type of stuff. Right? No, 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 no. Uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was about, about eight <laughs> ounces. They had it in the paper that it was like $19,000 worth of weed. There was, there was a couple... Yeah, there, was a, there was a couple of... There was a couple of edibles, too. So, you know, you get, you get 10, 12 edibles and you put them on the scale, it's going to weigh a pound. Yeah. So they're trying to say I had a pound of edibles. There was some 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 uh, what do you call it? Uh, butter, some, some oh, yeah, cooking butter yeah, yeah. in a jar. Same thing. You know, that wasn't even mine, but whatever. Um, again, they weighed that. You think like people sitting there? Yeah, <laughs> like half a pound. Yo, there was like eleven, twelve people there when the police came. Everybody threw their shit. Was like this. You know what yeah. I mean? So I caught I caught everything. But I, I'm not even mad about that. I was ready to do it all out. Like I've had a couple trials on weed. I think I'm going to make the world weed. Everybody knows me. I'm arguing the law's wrong, not me. You know, I, I, I got caught red-handed in, 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 in uh, Mount Holly back in 2010. I went to trial. I asked the jury to make the prosecutor give it back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I still got found not guilty. You know, I argued the law's wrong. Yo, look, you can't find 12 people in the, in the most Baptist, Baptist church or the most Jewish and Jewish temple. To say you should be in a cage for me. I don't even know why nobody, anybody, that's to the audience. I don't know why like nobody stays guilty. They start changing the law. Each other. Like that's it. Like you was in California for a few years. Mm -hmm. this, they changed the law over there. Mm -hmm. I'm legalizing over there for certain states. Uh, Denver, Washington. Um, but I was, I was here. I'm from Jersey. I'm just from, really South, from Jersey. Yeah, I'm from Jersey. I'm from South Jersey. Um, down in 
Oh, you're way down there. Yeah, between yeah. shit with Bill Camden all the time. And then it's, at some point in 2007, I just got frustrated with everything in Jersey and went to L.A. So when, at what point did they start calling you the weed man? Well, that was even before that. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the 90s. In the 90s, I, I was definitely rude back then. I was, you know, I was hauling a lot of weed in the, in the, uh, in the Camden. I eventually attracted the attention of the DEA. But I was a coast-to-coast truck driver. And, um, you were driving a company or something? Yeah, yeah. In the early, what happened? I, that's the story. What happens in the early 90s, 90, 90, I got out of the Army. 91, I decided to buy a truck. I drove somebody else's truck for a little while, and then I was like, yeah, I want to do this. I bought my own truck. So I was coast to coast. And one of my cousins, we, we, he grew up in uh, Willingboro. He was he lived in Arizona. And I remember going to his house, and like I hadn't seen him in years. And, you know, you know, childhood cousins. Right, right, right. I, I was in my 30s by now. So, bam, I see him. We smoked our first joint together. So, of course, you know, we bump into each other. We'll smoke some weed together. I smoked some weed with him. And at some point, he was like, yo, let's get some let's get some weed. I'm like, I'm like pulling out like $300. thinking we're going to get a couple ounces. And he's like, yo, you can get a pound of weed for that here. I was like, what? And the dude, I, know, I still remember the Spanish guy named Cadillac came over. And, um. I had like a thousand dollars on me, so I was like, "It's too good to be true." I bought three pounds of weed, you know, <laughs> and I got it back to Jersey. I drove it back that weekend, sold off three of them, eight hundred thousand dollars, whatever it was. Man, I got me another little to Arizona. Next week, I bought ten, came back to Jersey again, banged them all off, <laughs> banged them all off for a thousand. Went back, got thirty. It took me about three months, and I was rolling rocking with 100 pounds every time I went out there. Came back with 100 pounds and sold them all. With every time I come to Camden, bam, it was gone. I was doing real good for a couple of years. I didn't do it every week. I you know whatever I felt like. Every six months or so, I would do 100, 200 pounds, whatever the it was. The crazy thing is, like, we isn't like on their radar. Like, I, I was in, I was in Denver for 420, and I was talking to a bunch of people. They was like, like I had bought me mad we down there because they had deals. I'm like, yo, I bought too much weed. They're like, just take that shit home. I'm like, it ain't gonna be no problem. I'm like, yo, they don't give a fuck about your weed. You think they're gonna care about your couple of houses? You're like, put that shit in your bag or send it back. So or you like, or he said, just send that shit back to me. Like, yeah. I was like, all right. And that's what people do. Like, they do. You know how much I, weed I, is in the mail? I, the, 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 the U.S. Postal Service is the greatest. Marijuana delivery service there is. Like, and, 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 and that's because not only because they're the biggest. Because they're inefficient at catching stuff and finding stuff. Where FedEx and UPS are a little bit better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 put it, you, you put it in the United States Postal Service. They got another five. They just want to go home. Most time it's getting there. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. But, but, but getting back real quick to how I got the name Weed Man, what happened was I was doing that stuff in Arizona for a couple of years. At one point, I met this this other guy, the big man. The big man, they, I was doing good. You know, they, they liked me every time I came. And they was calling me Jersey. They knew I was from Jersey. Mm-hmm. I was coming, picking up my packages and rolling. I was always straight with my money. I wasn't arguing about nothing. I wasn't trying to, nobody was trying to rob me. Nothing. I was doing all this by myself, too. Yeah. You know, like, you know, usually, you know, you, you deal with a couple hundred thousand dollars, like, by yourself. You might end up in the desert. <laughs> you know, so I was leery and all that, but they liked me. So everything was good. Because and then one day, the dude, good. yeah, they was calling me Jersey. And then one, one time they tried to hand me a couple packages, you know, Little square packages, <laughs> you know, like this big. And I was like, it was like, yo, we don't find you, my man. We know you're coming back with the money. I was like, nah, man. I was like, nah. Five ounces of that give me life. No. Oh, they like more. They was giving me kilos. They was trying to give me kilos of coke. And I was like, I was like, I was like, nah. I said no. So then he was like, yeah, you just a weed man, right? I was like, yeah, I'm just a weed man. So then I was coming back, it was calling me Jersey Weed Man. And that's how I got my name, Jersey Weed Man. He's actually the in Arizona, so I called me Jersey Weed Man. I was like, man, all right, I'm rock with that. You know, I remember my first weed name on AOL was in Jersey Weed Man. And I was just like being funny then. But then when I wound up getting busted in 97, I got busted with a whole bunch of weed. And it was like my, my, I had my AOL page was like NJ Weed Man. And the next thing I know, I was trying to get some publicity. I was gonna fight my case. Bam, boom! It it rocked. You know that whole it's that whole yeah, 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 yeah. You know, most people don't even know my name. Yeah, I've been doing it for a while too. Yeah. So I sent him out the shop and everything. Right. I know your name. I just can't pronounce it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fortune. He's like Ed Fortune. Yeah, yeah, I like Fortune. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's because it's got the C and the H in it. It's it's, it's, it's like supposed to be a. French pronunciation. Well, we don't do salad, it. Yeah. It's supposed to be for Sean. For 
So we don't do it. None of us do it. None of the fortunes do it. We all say fortunes. So I, I all right. You know? <laughs> so, okay. just to use you, you got to be a man named, you know what I'm saying? It's, like I said, it's kind of ironic. You, you, we have states where they change the laws. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, so, well, it's it, it, it so happy. Like, it, it's kind of ironic. It, in all honesty, you know, I, I, I went out to California because the laws were well, so lax. They, yeah, they, yeah. they didn't make it yet, but it was so. Medical was there, right? And the cops and everybody just didn't care about it. Was, me. Yeah, it's the buckets of it like that. They really, I'm saying, was a real crazy no. offense. Like, and it's here, like, people like, and they say the 90s, people get locked up for a bag of weed, mm -hmm. want some, some time for a bag of weed, like, that was, it was crazy. Yep. You know what I mean? But this morning, Tuesday morning, I woke up, and I was, I was, I was I hearing the news about they, they actually going to that next step of changing the laws here in New Jersey. It was mm -hmm. the next. Yeah. So, if really, I told I said, no, I can call me, man. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, 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 um, you know, like myself, people might be being misunderstood about what the, the process of that law. You know what I mean? All right. I don't know if you saw me or not, but I actually went to those hearings. I, I went to those hearings. Okay. And uh, I wound up speaking. And before this thing, like, like my issue, like I'm totally 100% down on legalization. I've been talking about legalization for 20 years, about as loud as I could. But this particular law is called SB State Bill 2703. It's, it's, I'm not happy with this bill. First of all, it basically excludes us. It's about bitch white guys selling me. And I've always been an entrepreneur, so like just just not getting arrested is great, but that's not, you know, I want to be a piece of this business. I want to be in it. I want to be involved. I want to sell weed legally. I want to like all that. I, I'm down with all that. But this law is basically you got to be a millionaire. To, like, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. Now. I, went, I went to prison trying to become a weed millionaire. And now, you know, like, you know they're making it legal, but none of us are are, are in it. Right. It's like very, very. You gotta be, you gotta be filthy rich. Like man, there's a couple ball players who, who are who are trying to get in here in Jersey. Uh, Al Harrington used to play for uh, uh, the Indiana Pacers, and then you have uh, Amani Toomer used to be a Giant. You know you got you got those types. I, I hear Whoopi Goldberg might get involved. Right, bro. Yeah, but that's big money, black people. They ain't black people no more. They're green. You mean as far as getting dispensaries or just getting, right. getting dispensaries, yeah. having them just a shop where you can sell weed, all that? Because they're going to be having these micro licenses. What a loophole why like somebody was telling me about is like, like you said, it's going to be expensive to get a dispensary against like the big money. But as far as they can't really stop you, as far as the side businesses, like uh, they yeah. have people in like Denver and California that do it. Like it's legal to do it in your own home. So what people do is that in home. Like, you know, people do the right. sip and paint events. Right. You can right. smoke and paint. Right. Or do events in your home where you have it. Denver, well, Denver well, wherever it's legal at. In, in, like, they can't in, stop you there. Jersey, they're not really going to allow any of that. As, as the way this law is written right now, only lounges, the only you can't even have a lounge. Like, I, I consider myself, I got a smoke lounge now. Mm -hmm. So, the way this bill is, the only way you can have a, a, a consumption lounge, they call it, is if you have a license. So you go there, you buy it to sell, to, to sell, and then you go next door to the consumption lounge and you smoke. Mm -hmm. No other lounge is clear. Like if I applied for a consumption lounge right there, it would say no. You know what I mean? Like, like, and then, and then, like, it's not only is the the cost, certain towns, how they're going to distribute this, is different, different levels of it. Like, they're going to have like what they call a processor, somebody who can grow it. Somebody who can process it, dry it, do all that, yeah. and then distribute it to other licensed people. And they, they have distribution licenses, uh, which are a little bit less expensive. And then supposedly, from there, they're going to be allowed to have all these micro licenses where, again, distribution comes down to them, uh -huh. and, and, and delivery licenses and all this. But again, it requires all this big corporate money, all this. Yeah, like, that's how much is like? What's the process of these licenses? Like, what's the requirement? Are they well, they're still working it out, so you can't really say. But the way that the way it is, it's basically it takes hundreds of thousands of dollars, states? millions of dollars. No, so they're just taking ideas from the other states. Well, the well, they're, well, they're trying to, but first of all, they picked the wrong state. They, they're <laughs> trying to emulate Colorado. Right. So Colorado has a lot of issues with them. Um, for some reason, nobody wants to do a California model. If you ask me, a California model is the best model. Um, because it's, it's more of a free market system, is really wide yeah. open, and they've, they've allowed um, <laughs> minorities to, to get involved. You know, me, myself, I actually went out to LA, and I, and I had a dispensary from, from 2007 to 2013, 2000, you know, and, but I got put out of business by the DEA.
DEA second time. <laughs> like, fuck with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a track, but it's my mouth. Like, that's it. I, I'll totally admit it. It's my mouth. I mean, I was in LA, and to be honest with you, in hindsight, man, I should just went out there and just made my millions and shut up. Shut up. But, I, but, but I went out there. But come on, I was in Hollywood, man. I had my shop was on Hollywood Boulevard. Not only did I want to sell weed and have this place on Hollywood Boulevard, but I wanted to be the weed band. I wanted to be in movies. I wanted to be on TMZ. I wanted to do Hollywood. That's what happened. <laughs> I was getting famous in, in Hollywood for you like. You on Vice recently, so. Yeah, it, no, I, I, I've attracted the media yeah. my whole life, you know, like, I was my mouth. But. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when I was in LA, I mean, that was good for TMZ. It was good for Direct TV. I did a couple of shows. I did Spike TV a couple of times. I did all this, this stuff, but as the weed man. But that's offensive, I guess, to, to politicians and to, to, to uh, uh, prosecutors and stuff. Mm -hmm. So at some point, the prosecutors in New Jersey basically called out to LA and got the, the, the Justice Department in LA to smash me using the DEA. And, you know, that, that brought me back home. I ended up back here in Jersey. I had a little bout of uh, bone cancer too at the same time. So it took me like a year to get through all that. I got through that. My health was back right. Mercifully, Burlington County locked me up for some stupid shit for six months. I got done that. And then it was like, okay, what am I going to do? And I was really going to go back to LA. I was like really considering going back to LA. And I was getting ready to. And I started looking around here. And I started coming to Trenton every night. I was getting all the bars. I was like, man, I like Trenton. I was like, you know, I was like, you know, started talking to different people. And then I spotted that building across the street from City Hall. I was like, I couldn't resist it. It was like a like smack right in the face. Yeah, though. I was like, <laughs> but I wanted to give the finger to the system. Like, I didn't even know, I didn't care who the mayor was. Nothing that building to me, man. Government. You know, and I was like, I'm, I'm I'm right the the yeah, 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 I always run for office. I run for office all the time. It's yeah. not even like I think I'm going to win. It's just my way of giving a fist <laughs> finger to the system. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's it. I, like, yeah, I want it about. And I had never put no real money into it. I get my name on the ballot. I talk to a couple people, but I'll never do the campaign. You let me you let me get this money from the city. I'm suing y'all city, man. You let me get this money, I'm going to put a whole lot of it towards me really running for office one day. Name recognition is all you're so. I know, but you got to put commercials out. You got to do a little yeah. things. You got, you know, like this, like I just, I was on the ballot just now for a state assembly, right? But again, I'm trying to eat every day. I'm trying to do what I got to do to live. I, and as far as campaigning, going all over the place, we can read and kiss and things. I, 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 I ain't have no time because I'm broke, you know? Like, again, if you got money, then you can just do whatever you want. You can, like, you buy for off like a hobby. Like, you know, I'll spend three or four days, you know, campaigning this week. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah, I couldn't do some of those things. I guess, I mean, there's a lot of broke people who do run for office. So, yeah, I'm more of a protest. I was more of a protest candidate. You know, I never yeah. really think I was going to win. Because it's crazy because you just came home this, this spring. Mm -hmm. And then turn around, we had a mass shooting at the auto night. You was out there with the live and everything. Yo, that was my first night out. Like, I came out. first night out? No, not out. But the first night I went out. Oh, okay, I, came, okay, I, came, okay. I got home on the 24th. It was in the middle of the week. The end of the week was the first. And I didn't, I just didn't go out. Was, you know, I was home. Right. I was, you know, it's still shell shock. Like, oh, shit, I was just on the South East. Southeast and now here I am, you know. Like, <laughs> so I was show side for a little no, bit. No, he was you because the dude was like, he was like a guy. So he was like for like seventeen years. But he was at the workhouse and went somewhere else. He just came home that February. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I ain't know him at all. But what happened? I, I go to this event. I'm at the event. I've been to those. Oh, I mean, I'm yeah, every year. Yeah, every year. Like, and I remember I was I was inside the building. I had my camera. I was taking pictures and talking to people. I was just videotaping. I was videotaping, I was me and this girl were talking, and she wanted the pictures, so I flipped it from, from pictures, I mean, from cameras to pictures, and I took a couple of pictures of her, took the selfie with us, and I walked out the door. And while I was walking out the door, there were some dudes right inside the door, they was arguing or something. They was talking, I just thought they were talking, I realized it was arguing. I just heard somebody talking about his sister, and they you know, like, take care of her. And, oh, I, I heard that, and I just was like, and I heard dudes saying, nah, man, it ain't like that, you know, like, I don't know how that happened, and it was just, that's all I could hear, and I went out the door. I was out the door, I went out the door like, wow, look at this crowd. I put my camera up there, I took about five pictures, and there was a dude against the wall, the 
the, 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 me and him spoke for a second because we were just in a workhouse together. And I remember speaking to him, and it was like, boom, 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 boom. Wait a minute, he said, the first boom, the entire crowd went. Everybody froze. Yeah, everybody <laughs> froze. The first shot, everybody froze. It was like, be between the second and the third shot, everybody was in full flight. It was like, it was, and it was just like this, boom, 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 boom. And everybody was running. And there was six more shots. Boom, 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 boom. It was 10 shots real fast. I, I jumped on In fact, I didn't run like Paul S. I was right around the corner. I squatted by the wall, was holding my camera. I was trying to turn my camera from camera to, to, video. to, to video. And then it was like, pat, 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 pat. That was the cops. And the cops was like, that shit was crazy. Like, pat, 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 pat. And then I thought it was over. And it's just I went to step around the corner. This dude comes running out. I'm not from Trenton, so I don't know. I know everybody told it. Everybody else knows his name. They did. But I come around the corner, and here he comes running out. And the cops that I had already seen them standing in front of the door. They was just like everybody else. I like, was standing there. Like, they was holding their guns in front of the door. Yeah, and the dude comes running out the door. And I'm right there. And they start shooting at him as he's running. They're shooting at him. So they shot him back. They, yo, man, they shot everybody outside. Nobody was outside shot by nobody but the cops. It was five people. In my film, oh, yeah, it was yeah. five people. And the, the two dudes, the one dude I just spoke to against the wall, there was two of them against the wall got shot. Some other dudes across the street talked to me. He came and talked to me one day. He was like, yeah, man, I was in your film. You can't see me, but you was yelling over. Y'all all right? Because and he said the same thing. He said he was looking over towards the door. Dude came running out. Cops started. Shooting. And next thing you know, he was on the ground because he got hit in the ribs. Yeah. And he fell and he just hit him and he dropped. And then, as he's shooting and as, as he's running, I felt air, you know, like I felt the percussions in the paper the next day. I was like, yeah, I felt the percussions. And people was like, man, you don't really feel the percussions from 30 feet away. You had a bullet whiz by your face. That's what that was. You know, you know you imagine that would have been in the paper. We may get out of jail, he's suing the government. Guess what? He got shot in the face. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know what I mean? Like I came, like I felt, I did feel, but I felt it twice, cause they shot at him when he was running, and he got hit. He got hit like kind of in front of me, but like ten feet away, and then he was like this, and he like, like it took him like twenty five more feet to actually hit the ground. Like he, he was hit, and he was just staggering and sputtering, and then he hit the ground. And one cop ran around in front of him. I still hadn't ran. I'm still like this, like oh shit, oh shit. And he, and he starts yelling at him, and he's on the ground flopping like a fish to the other. He's, he wasn't still. He just got shot. He wasn't still. And the cop shot him again three more times. And when he shot him, there was a girl next to me, like right on the other side of the car. There was a car between me and her. And then she got hit in the leg. She's like, ah! And that's when I put my film on. That's the first thing you see in my film. This girl was talking about she got hit. Somebody's like, oh, she got hit. And you see the dude in the street. And he's shot. And I'm saying, he ain't had no gun. He ain't had no gun. When he was running, I didn't see no gun. Later, after I'm looking at the film and look at it again, there is a gun on the ground after he got shot. I don't know, I, I, I swear I didn't see it in his hand. If he had it on him, and when he got shot, it fell. Or maybe it did have it in his hand, but he was running just like everybody else, and he fell. That gun fell. And then the gun got shot him again. That come, was to find, yeah. Yeah, come to find out, you know, like everything I said in that video is true. Cops shot everybody I can see. That's true. The, the, the boy who got shot was in the middle of the street. That was my video. Everybody saw that video. They, they, he, he wasn't a shooter. The gun that they checked, that, that gun that was in the street, it's in my film. He wasn't a shooter. He didn't shoot. He ain't fired. He, he ran. He shouldn't have had a gun. I don't know the circumstances of it. I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't know the person. I don't know the shooter at all, basically. Well, he, he might have been involved in an argument. And when we start shooting, he was one of the ones getting shot at. That's why I ran. I, I, but I don't even know that for sure. I ain't see it. But that's, that's what I heard. That, 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 and then from what I actually tell you, I was right outside the door. I heard that first shot. I had just stepped out of the door. So I heard the little argument. I stepped out the door. I wasn't out of the door. 30 seconds when the first shot went off. My guardian angel was on my shoulder because I saw the crowd and they was pushing everybody out. And they said, yeah, it was time to go. So when I got to the parking lot, that's when I heard all the shooting. So yeah, I, should, I, I left uh, just in time. We were yeah. like, my wife and my sons were up there all in the year. Mm -hmm. And we were shooting around like 12 midnight. You know what I'm saying? At the same time they were doing that, I was here. And like, of course, I had like 2 o'clock in the morning, something like that. 
So I heard the real that shit went into my heart. I heard him was like, God damn, like come on, man, you serious? Yeah. Like this is one of the biggest events we have in the city. You know what I'm saying every year. It took place for Hatch's Day. Now, I don't even remember Hatch's Day back in the day we got down here from downtown. You know what I'm saying? We had the, uh, the African American, yeah, uh, the African American um, Pride uh, Festival. I, I heard of uh, Coward Park. It was be this year, dope event every year. Mm-hmm. You know I'm saying we got that no more. You know what I'm saying like it's crazy, but you know, it's not all this oh, man. It's not all this us though. So like I said, the cops that we shoot too. You know what I mean, so they just cop shot everybody. <laughs> and just to bring it back around to you, like do me. I go in the um. Or all night we go out there and chill with us. Marvy sitting in the crowd and smoke some weed. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's chilling. Yeah, yeah. Chilling, you know? But you know, so I, I I've been there before and I have smoked weed there. Other people have, especially late at night. I wouldn't do it during the daytime. Right? No, that's what they're doing. But the whole yeah. but at nighttime, yeah. like that, and the cops were actually cool the last couple of years. I went there because it was the way to be able to handle the stuff. Like, it's, it's a peaceful event. Like, right. it's been like that. I mean, I remember I went to the first one, the very first one they had out there. Yeah, I mean, I actually I booked to my artist uh, format out there. Um, so ever since that, like, from that day on, I've been going to those events. You know what I'm saying? It's been the same peaceful atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? We've got to see some new shit, new art, these new people, you know what I'm saying? Some different things. But um, I mean, hopefully, we, we, we get it together, man. We get it right. We'll oh, right. talk to some of the more positive stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because that shit fucked me up, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, my condolences yeah, yeah, yeah. to all the family that lost the one. I'm saying, that event, I'm saying, unfortunately. Also, my condolences go out to the lady, uh, to the family. The lady just got shot yesterday on, on Stuyvesant. Uh, my condolences go out to her and her family. Um, but you know, we got enough shit. We can talk about negative shit all day long. But what's going on at, at, the, at, the, at the joint, man? At the man joint. Man. So, yeah. I mean, you got a comedy going on Thursdays. You got. Uh, you got Comments uh, on Friday. Friday, every third Friday. Karaoke on the fourth Friday. Okay, got no, actually, karaoke on the second Friday. Okay. Um, I got this meet and greet thing on the fourth Friday. And what else is there? Uh, you got the, the punk rock, the, uh, the oh, band, yeah. the live I mean, bands. I've been doing a lot of bands on Sundays. On Sundays, for those people that like that, that, yeah, that, that good yeah, rock and roll music or whatever. Yeah, punk been, music, whatever. It's a uh, Grateful Dead cover band. Uh, Grateful okay. Dead was a big band. It was more like heavy metal or like rock. No, it's like uh, it's like it's like soft rock. It's soft like rock. this whole weed smokers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hippie music, kind of like a, a classic soft rock. It's not, you know, it's not offensive. It's not that whole loud you know, yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's cool. You know, some of the songs even like I'm not a grateful dead person. I wasn't. But now, I, in the last few weeks, I keep. Yeah, they were huge, they were huge, but I wasn't like into them. But now I've heard a couple of songs, I'm kind of paying attention to, to it now. I, I, I found myself on uh, uh, iHeartRadio the other day, just found me a, a, a Grateful Dead uh, music. We just played Grateful Dead all day, and I was sitting there listening. There was a, quite a few songs I actually liked. But I didn't realize that crowd was there that would come to try to do it until it was like my girlfriend came. Yeah, let's have a Grateful Dead night. We had a Grateful Dead night that first night. Hundred some people showed up. I was like, "Whoa! Oh, we are gonna have this every Sunday." Yeah. So now, so now we have every other Sunday we have a Grateful Dead Dead events. I was trying to do the the, the hip hop nights on, on, on Saturdays, and you know before before I went to jail, it was it was good. For some reason, I couldn't get it back this time. Nobody was showing up. You know, so I recently I switched to uh, old school. Old school Saturdays, play nothing but eighties, nineties music, and just rock out with a couple, couple events on so spoken word on Thursdays, a couple things like that. Serving food and everything, everything. Serving food and everything. But I have to tell you something, man. Here's how I feel. You ever, you know, read about Muhammad Ali, throw a little vanilla with him and fighting uh, uh, Joe Frazier, right? Muhammad Ali won the fight, but Joe Frazier beat him up. Muhammad Ali spent a couple of days in the hospital, had a broken jaw, broken ribs, couldn't fight for a year, this, that, and the other, but he won. I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I beat the city of Trenton, but they beat me up. <laughs> you wouldn't have fought, they beat your ass. Yeah, I, I, I lost 16 months of freedom, the business, luckily, my girl paid the rent while I was gone, so, so the business was still there, but the crazy thing is they chased everybody away. That was one of their goals, to chase everybody away from me. 
good and and nobody came back. Like, I think I, I mean at the end of the day, like I think people want they, they will like people will be back. It's just, just you gotta get like you gotta get like the test. We got the hottest podcast in the city right now. So they're gonna be coming back, checking you out. We'll see. Well, you hear that, y'all? Every third Listen, Friday is coming. I need y'all to come back. Sundays is, uh, got the, uh, the people there every other Sunday. I tell you what, the best thing is go to my website. Mm-hmm. Facebook also, right? And, yes, this, I got Facebook pages for the joint. You know, that's, that's the name of the restaurant, NJ Weed Man's Joint. So there's a Facebook page and there's an event page for that. But it's also njweedmansjoint.com. njweedmansjoint.com. There's a tab for events. Click on the tab for events and it has it all listed. Everything I'm doing. In fact, I made a schedule from now all the way until April right now. I have a couple questions. Um, what do you think is more important? The medicinal marijuana or the loud on the streets? <sighs> <laughs> See, here's what, it, here's, here's what it is. I don't know. Do you think it at all? No, I'm not ready to go. This is not ready to go. No, it's a question. But we're ready from Jamaica, so we're ready to go. No. No, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. But what it is, is the dispensaries, the medical marijuana dispensaries here in New Jersey are inefficient. The quality is not there. I was actually complaining about it today. Somebody gave me some some weed from a dispensary. I was like, who pays this money for this? Who buys they charge like top dollars. They charge like five five hundred dollars an ounce, five and a half. Like five fifty for an ounce of weed. But the medical can you get on the shorts and shit? Some of them do. There's very few though. But the, the point is, first of all, there's really no difference between medical weed and regular weed. You know what I mean? It's just 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 it's just and the laws that make you that these people can sell it. So here in Jersey, you know, ten years ago, they basically passed this law, Kuma, the Compassionate Use of Medical Marijuana Act, and set up these six places they can sell marijuana. And they're not really good, good at, at, at grows. And in the beginning, they had all kinds of problems. And now they're growing. They can't supply the amount to people. And like I said, plenty of times the weed they, they, they can't be selling from nowhere else been. because it's still a, it's still a federal law. Right. I'm saying they cost the state line that can be. But the black shit. market does. <laughs> <laughs> the black market is hey, I can I get plenty of Cali but <laughs> from different people, you know. Thank God for the U.S. <laughs> post office. <laughs> What's your favorite strain? <laughs> Master Kush, King Kush, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you talk about your fish man. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, good, good. You remember that back in the Hawaiian stuff back in the day? I remember the name. Yeah, yeah. I'm like this one. That's some that's yeah. one. That's some of the smoothest weed that's coming. That's some of the smoothest weed back there. But there's 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 still skunk out there. I mean, especially like see here. Everything is imported here, mostly illegal. Ninety-nine percent of it is all illegal. Yeah, so you, you're stuck with whatever you get. Whatever you yeah, you stuck with whatever you get, whatever somebody's connection. That's what's but when you go to a state like California, Colorado, Washington State, they were doing like people a lot of shit. But it's not. But it's, yeah, but but there's hundreds of varieties to choose from if you go into the stores and places and stuff like that. I had a dispensary for five years, and I always had 20, 30 different strains at a time. It's that and the other, and that's why I. I, I I know what I really like. I like heavy cushions, the, the, the hybrid heavy cushions with a heavy heavy indica side. Yeah. Um, that's that's what I like. Yeah. But I mean, there's there's the Tevas that are out there. They're very good. Some sour diesels and stuff. Now here's here's the thing, because I'm from the East Coast, but I spent a significant amount of time on the West Coast. Most East Coasters don't even know what what the, what they're smoking. Yeah, yeah. Whatever name they get. They, yeah. they, they, they just claim, all right, somebody tell you, oh, man, this is some super bubble, 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 bubble. Yeah, they, 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 they got some super nah, bubble, 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 bubble. You know, man, but this is, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. People got married. I remember the Cali show out there. I'm saying, you guys kept because of this one. Especially, the, uh, they got, got some, I don't know what it was. That shit was good. I was small. I was at the time. I was not smoking anymore. But I was in the music. We had a hotel room. They just lighting them up. Like, like, I'm sitting there just like this, like, like, I, like I hit the blunt myself. Like, God damn, like, whatever that shit was, good as that. That's what the end of the yeah, so when, And when I was in, in Cali, I saved all the good, but I, we sold it. We, we sold it there. Because, first of all, the competition's so high that people in California ain't smoking good. So you gotta have the best. If you, if you got a retail establishment where you're selling weed, you, you, you gotta have the best. best. So, yeah. so that's the best that's got sold in the dispensaries. 
It's the, 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 the bullshit back east. It, 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 it wouldn't be bullshit to the East Coasters because no, you know, it's something different right. us. Yeah, right. So, and 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 again, I was guilty of it. You know, bought me some some Afghan something that, that was cheap by California standards. Didn't have the California quality, but I know I throw it in the box and ship it to Jersey. But somebody's paying twenty five, three thousand dollars for it anyway, <laughs> and whatever, and whatever, and, and it worked. <laughs> and, and that's how it is a lot with, with, with people on the East Coast. You know, there's very few growers. Even though I have to tell you something, here's a market that a lot of people in Jersey's not picking up on. We go up to up ninety five, go to Massachusetts, go to Maine, go to Rhode Island, and there's there's some there's some good there's some good wheat being grown up there right now. Yeah. You know, and it's because they're allowed to. If they allowed people to grow weed here, it'd take a couple of years, but it would, it would develop a good growth. That's all, yeah, that's right. You need to have a grown growers out here to actually yeah. that product. Mm -hmm. Okay, but well, like I said, let me know if you want to find all the events out and everything. Let me know where uh, you find you at on the social media website and all that stuff. Let me check you out, I mean, and come back, come back to the weed man joint. You know I mean, yeah, I need I need y'all to come back. Uh, but NJ Wee Man's joint, you know where it is, 322 East East State Street, right across the street from City Hall. I'm the real mayor, y'all. I'm the real mayor. I'm the mayor of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but uh, check, you know, I, we're on Facebook, NJ Wee Man's joint. I got my own personal page, NJ Wee Man, but the, the place is NJ Wee Man's joint. I got NJ Wee Man's joint.com. And you see all our events and things like that. Come on back, man. Please scare us off. Please scare a lot of people off. I need y'all to come back. You know, I will. Like as far as I'm concerned, I haven't. I haven't really like won. I'll. I, I'll won. I'll feel like a winner when people come, come back, back. Come back. Start enjoying themselves. And yeah. You know I mean, and, you know. And that was their mission to scare people away. Yeah, and they, they did. did. Some of the events that, you know, I mean, what's going on down there? I said it's um. You know, it's gonna take time. They're definitely a trend, especially like I've been out six months. I've been open for four. Today, had two people came in today. Two. Now, there are other days, or 10, 15, but today was two. I was shocked. It was just two. And somebody bought a five dollar something, somebody bought three dollars and gave a dollar. So I gave my book nine dollars today. It's, 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 it's horrible. It's just horrible. I mean, he keeps coming back. I mean, it's true. I don't know. I would come back if I got paid that nine dollars for half. <laughs> like I decided, I just like listen, listen man. Nobody's coming for days. Just go. Yeah. yeah. He was he was there from eleven o'clock to five o'clock. We just ain't make no money. So again, you know, if you want me to win, come patronize me. I, I keep telling people, that, man, I fought the law, I fought the state, and I won publicly. Like so many people have been beat up by the state. Like, me myself, I was looking at the situation. I was. I mean, I would go support that guy if it would be up to yeah. but I'm not, I'm not getting that. I don't know if it's something about me. I don't know if it's people are afraid about the government. But I thought I had a, a good story, you know. And if you had told me six months, I got out six months ago, I was like, yeah. I, I whooped the state, whooped the city. Man, they done messed up now. Now I'm really going to roll it. You know, I'm really going to rock it out. But you know, I'm, I'm struggling. Yeah, it's 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 nobody's yeah, showing like, up. Yeah, so you go for 16 months to pick out one back up to you again. You know what I'm saying? They got to see what's going on. Make sure you ain't being followed by the police. <laughs> Look, it's me. It's me. I know. You know what I mean? Like, they're not really doing nothing anyway. You know? They, they dropped all my weed charges. They don't want nothing of this. So you know, that's it. They dropped all the charges. They dropped all the charges. They said, them. You're taking them, you say, you're taking them to court. I'm suing them. I go to court. Uh, next time I go to court, uh, December the sixth in federal court, and I'm at the point now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get the, the prosecutors and all that, uh, uh, depose them and everything. See, I had filed a lawsuit early on when they first started harassing. Me. Yeah. You know, and then they threw me in jail and all that. But this civil suit has been going on all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I had a, a federal, I mean, a, I mean a, 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 a civil rights lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, law firm, a big law firm out of, uh, out of Atlanta, Georgia. You know, they read about me, and bam, they came up here with the help of Dog and Family Hunter and all that. And they took over my, my civil case, and my civil case is working. Uh, one day you want to read 
See, it's Trent it sells a weed, man, for four million dollars or something like that. Four point two, four twenty, you know, it's gonna be something like this. Be or a million dollars. I don't know, but it, not only did they do, do the, do the, you know, me personally, four hundred forty-seven days in jail on some pony charges. I mean, they created pony charges. They, they went on a campaign. Yeah. The time, yeah. life, all they that. deliberately like violated the constitution and, 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 and harassed my business. You know, like here I am. You know. I was just saying, uh, rats are, yo, I went to the FBI and argued about, tried to file complaints against the city of Trent Police Department that they were harassing me. And, you know, the, the, the FBI basically was like, well, you're, you're poking the bear. You know? you're, you're, I'm like, no, I'm suspending myself. I'm like, they are stupid and they are like, like they're, they're harassing me. Like, what am I supposed to do? Talk my tail and shut up? I'm like, no. You know, yeah. Yeah, guys like 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 Officer Flowers coming over there bothering me. I'm sitting outside with, with my son trying to get people to come in. He ain't gonna come over there and bother me. Huh? And then they got mad when I called him a name. <laughs> I don't know if you know about that. Hey, y'all Google this. I'm gonna tell you, dude, here's what you do. Google NJ Weedman versus Officer Flowers. Y'all know Officer Flowers. Big 300 pound, tender butt. You know, I call him, no, I call him a pedophile. But I, call oh, him, I call him tender, but because he got all upset that I called him a pedophile uh, yeah, and, yeah. and filed criminal charges against me. You know, call him a, uh, yeah. Now, now, if I called him a name like that, <clears throat> he could sue me, he should have sued me. Instead, they illegally filed charges against me for, for me exercising my first amendment right. I can call him. I can call anybody a name, especially a public official. You know how many names Donald Trump be called every day? Yeah, every you day. You know you can't charge him with a crime. With a crime? Yeah. Record, I, this guy's a, a police officer. He's, that means a public official. I called him a name, and he charged me with cyberbullying. Cyberbullying? Because somebody else videotaped it and put it online. <laughs> and he fought this phony charges, man. I, I got charged with cyberbullying. They police. arrested me. Yeah, trying to police department. I, I, yeah, I did. I called it tender so butt. Yeah, tender butt. Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> when are you going to start your own podcast, man? man? I've done it a couple times, but for some reason, I don't know, man. I, want, I, I just want to do. I don't know. I want to do a reality show. That's what I was trying well, to that's, do. That's, I mean, I mean you know? that can lead to it, like your podcast lead to that, you know what I'm saying, that, that vision out there, you know what I'm saying? People want to see that, like, we're going on the weed man joint, you know what I'm saying, on a regular basis, you know what I mean? Maybe you can reach out to some of the local uh, videographers or producers in the city, you know what I'm saying, that can get together and make something happen. You know what I'm saying, reality show, that's not dope to me, though. Yeah, uh, well, I'm trying to do it right now, I'm trying to, I'm working on getting some funding, which I think, I, I think, I think, I think it's done. I mean, we, 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 uh, me and Dio had a had a meeting last last week with with, with um, some Hollywood people. Okay. Um, they came to Jersey, to, you know, right there in the shop. There, like, I, I've been able to attract the attention of these people before. And like I said, three years ago when I came here, I, I had I was in negotiations with. With, with somebody to, to do a reality show when the police start harassing. They yeah, scared them jail, off too. The yeah, 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 jail. Yeah. So now I got out. That dream yeah. is still there. So I think I can, all over yeah, here. I think I can have like a show like Black Ink, you know? Yeah. But it's like a, a, a chicken joint in the city of Trenton, you know, and all the all the drama that goes on in Trenton. I think there's a lot of colorful characters a lot in of Trenton that <laughs> can come through yeah. and it can be them characters just like when you watch Black Ink. It's just Characters that come, come in and out. Like, I like Black Ink, but I don't like Love and Hip Hop. You know what I mean? I love and Hip Hop. Oh, I can watch it though. I don't really watch it. I, I catch him when I, you know what I mean? When she, when she, when I can't get the TV from her. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I know it's <laughs> So when, when I turn to watch TV, I can't, like, all right, I don't know. I'll watch it. She loves that. But um, I ain't going to jump no more, man. You got, some, you got another podcast to do later on tonight. I'm going to jump You know what I'm saying? Actually, I got two. Got two. Okay. Something at 7 30. I'm supposed to go up there. In fact, I'm not going to make it there. Now. But we were talking about eight o'clock earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now he says seven thirty. Okay. But either way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna make it. I need right now. Uh, Maybe. I ain't make it. Yeah. No, it's this is over an hour. Of oh, okay. I still have stop back in the shop, grab my dog. My dog is there in the highway. I probably ain't gonna hit the hit the road to seven o'clock. Oh, okay. So I ain't okay, making okay. it. So we ain't gonna go man. Let people know one more time. We can find you at Facebook, social media, website. 
What I really want you to do is come to 322 <laughs> East State Street, buy a turkey burger, hang out, smoke a bowl. Listen, you know what? Come on. I got a place. It's a smoke lounge. You can come, eat, get your munchies on, next door, smoke, smoke and toast. You know, I, I tell people all the time, like, man, there are, there are cigar bars in the state of New Jersey. There are plenty of bars you can go outside and smoke, but this is the only place in New Jersey right now. I'm still the only one that I have a 420 lounge where you can come and smoke and chill and relax, all that. You know, it's the only one in the state of New Jersey. So come on down to 322 East State Street. You can find us online at njweedmansjoint.com or our Facebook page, NJ Joint. All right, man, it's your boy, Justin. Give a shout out to my man, Bless Child. Once again, I'm saying Stress Out Clothing, the responsible for the, uh, the blog talk radio. I mean, shout out to my co host Ace Kia. She's not here. She lost her dad uh, last week. So, those um, are out to her family. Um, it's, man, look, Global Unlimited Podcast, hottest shit in town right now. We, man, we out. Peace.